Hello everybody, it's Rose and I am uh, going to do a two-part video tonight. Um, I'm going to do a demonstration of how I remove excess glue uh, or adhesive from um, diamond paintings that have the paper covers. Uh, it's not so much of an issue with the diamond paintings that have the plastic cover. And I'm then going to um, organize all my drills for this diamond painting. So the one that I'm working on right now is the pastel butterfly. And I will insert the um, link to the unboxing video up in the corner here. Okay. And um, yeah, so I'll uh, I'll do this now and set up the drills. Uh, so uh, just to let you know what my tools for this will be, I'm going to go as low tech as possible. Okay, I'm not even going to use a sharp edge to do this. Just to show you that you like I I do it with exacto knife, my exacto knife sometimes, but you don't have to use an exacto knife. At least I don't think so. Um, I've used my Ever moment tweezers or hua can tweezers um, to do the removal of the glue uh, many times. So, and I'm gonna also show you using my Pet Perks card from PetSmart. Okay, so we're gonna start now. So, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull back uh, the paper a little bit, just fold it back a teeny tiny bit and take my straight edge um, you know what I'm gonna fold it back a little bit less because I want to lay my straight edge down and I don't want to lay the straight edge on the glue itself just because then I have to fight to lift it off and I don't want to risk damaging the glue okay so I'm gonna pull it back a little tiny bit more Usually I put the straight edge here. Uh, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the straight edge there. All right. And you don't actually have to use a straight edge. It's just, it will give you a slightly better line. But you have to lay it down just so if you are going to use one. Okay, so there we go. So I'm taping it down using the adhesive itself. And now these are the tweezers that I've been using since, well, since I got them. And they used to have a sharper tip on them. They're still pretty sharp, but they no longer break my skin. When I first got them, they were so sharp that I used to accidentally prick myself and draw blood. So I, um, just because I gripped my diamonds pretty hard when I was using it to place my diamonds, um, the, the tips broke off. And then I used my whetstone just to smooth out the, uh, the leftover uh, ends. And uh, so now I have a nice, a nice uh, piece of um, tool here. So what I do is I just take my tweezer and run it along the glue. Okay. And uh, so it's nice with the tweezers because I don't actually have to worry about ripping the painting. Whereas with the X-Acto knife, like I go very light with the X-Acto knife, but if you're worried about potentially damaging your canvas, using the tweezers is better. And then all I do is I, uh, okay, so first I uh, score it here as well where it's, um, where this piece of paper ends. I'm just gonna show you uh, removal of of one end and then you just you just roll it back now hold on I'm gonna pull this one up a little bit usually I do about three inches at a time because when I'm working on diamond paintings I work on three inches at a time um, hold on. it's just a case of getting started here there we go I'm started and then you kind of just roll it back 
And now I'm using the sides of the tweezers, not the sharp edge of the tweezer. And I'm just removing the glue. And there we go. I hope you can see that. I'll get in a little bit closer so that you can see more clearly what I'm doing. And sorry about the light. Let me see if I can angle the light a little bit better. Lighting is always my biggest problem. Okay. So you see what I'm doing? I'm just, I'm literally rolling it back, making sure that, uh, that I take it slowly enough that I can see that I'm not damaging the glue here, okay? So I'm just going to lay the edge or lie the edge of my card along the glue here so that you can see that, well, I'll do it this way, um, that I have not actually removed any glue from the diamond painting itself, okay? From the drill area itself. It's, I'm being really careful to roll it back and I'm watching very carefully this edge here, okay? Um, the final, like the top grid line here, just to make sure that I don't see any glue from below. If I had used the um, X-Acto knife to score it, I wouldn't have to even worry about that uh, because there, there would have been no risk of, of the glue not being cut all the way through. But since the tweezers, I mean, you can see that the, the tweezers are, they're sharp, but they're not as sharp as, a, as an X-Acto knife, thank goodness. And again, I don't want to be scratching the canvas too much, so I'm being careful to use the side of the tweezers and just rolling this away. And there is nothing here. Like, there is nothing here. There's no stickiness whatsoever left. The, the um, adhesive comes up without any uh, residual adhesive staying on the canvas if you do this um, this way. And I'll tell you, I do this because I tried washi tape, I think with my first, well not my first, but um, after I started watching the YouTube videos, everybody was using washi tape on the excess glue. And I tried that, but I hadn't watched Natalia's um, Lovecraft Forever uh, video, which I found so helpful, um, about uh, the different kinds of washi tape. And apparently there's really sticky washi tape and there's really unsticky washi tape. And unfortunately what I had purchased was the unsticky washi tape. See how this is just rolling off now? I'm just going to move this a little bit so that uh, you can see more clearly. And I'm, I just have my um, my silicone baking mat, uh, which I use uh, as a non-slip surface. It, it keeps everything where I want it. And since I'm working on a uh, tilted surface with my drafting table, um, using the mats just makes sure that everything from my cup of coffee to my drill pens and all of that stuff don't slide off the table. So there we are, we're just about done. I think I'll work from this end now. Okay, so I'm not sure if I scored it all the way here. So I will, there. Just I wanna hold this nice and carefully. And again, I am not digging the tips of the tweezers into the canvas at all. It's just running along the canvas. Now I picked a canvas that had a pretty um, you know, substantial amount of excess glue. Like there is, well, let me see in centimeters, there was, yeah, a centimeter of excess glue. Which for me, that's, that's just way too much. I don't mind having like, you know, a, a tiny little bit. This is what, probably 
three millimeters or something like that over here. Um, yeah, that's three millimeters of glue on this side. That I'm not going to go through this process for. Um, but, uh, but you might want to. Um, I figure I'll be cutting all of that off if I ever frame these. So it doesn't, uh, it's not a big deal. And the glue just forms this sort of mass, uh, which in just a few seconds here, when I reach the end, there, that's it, that's the glue. That's the adhesive, and it is kind of a sheet. You can you can stretch it a bit if you want to. Um, and so my card is not sticking. Like it sticks to the glue, but so even here, like I can. So okay, I'm putting it stands up there, but even well, so. I may not have cut it perfectly, but anyway, like it's not standing up here because I've gotten rid of all the glue. Okay, so that's that's the demonstration of removing glue. It takes a few minutes, but um, you know, if you're not a huge fan of washi tape, then uh, it's I think it's a good solution, and it's something you may wish to try. So I'm going to do the rest uh, later, but um, I'm not going to worry about it right now. So right now what I'm going to do is put aside this diamond painting. I'm going to lift you back up. All right. Now bear with me, I'm going to reorient the camera. Whoops, sorry about that. Okay, I'll turn this as well. Okay, get rid of my light pad because I don't need that. So I am going to be using the Doris tray. Um, there's 13, 26, 39. Um, I guess there's 78. No, uh, yeah, 78. 78 um, containers. Uh, these are the leftover drills from my poppies. I'm going to be shooting a video tomorrow morning when the light is better. I would meant to do it today, but the light was not very good, um, where I show you the final uh, poppies. And, um, and I'll also do um, a review. Like, I have not really looked at the poppies. I took them off my workstation and uh, have set them aside. Uh, and I'll take a good look at them tomorrow with you and um, and we'll pick off any drills that you know may not have been perfect like I, I thought, think I did a pretty good job of that as I went along but um, but there might be drills that still need uh, to be picked off and replaced in fact I, I know that there are so I'm working on the pastel dragonfly Oh, okay, there's two bags, uh, and sometimes I, I will use two bags just to make sure that if, because I have a big container for my drills, if you haven't seen my organizing video, um, for all the drills of all my paintings in my stash, and sorry for the crinkling, I know that drives some of you crazy, um, anyway, uh, and I would hate for one bag to rip open, especially if there are uh, multiple loose, like if there's um, loose drills. I would hate to have a bag rip open and then try and figure out which diamond painting it belongs to. Um, so I just, I, I will double bag many of my diamond paintings. Okay, so... And I keep the cellophane bags because I will reuse them um, for other paintings. Okay. 
right, let me get this out of the way. And then I will get the tools of my trade for this. So I have a funnel, which I may use. I have, hold on, where is it? Okay. I have a, just a, a small dish. If I had a, a glass one, and I, I, I would use it, but I like this one because it's got, um, it's got uh, corners that I can pour with. So I'll just move all these rolls aside. Okay. So what I am going to do now is just make a photocopy of Maybe I have another copy of this because this actually, I'm going to look for my copy of this. So in my organizing video, I showed you my binder. And so I've got um, my ready paintings, which I organize according to uh, the name that I've given the painting. And this is the pastel butter, uh, dragonfly. So I do have the original um, inventory sheet, so I keep that with the painting. Now I'm going to move this to the front because I'm working on. Oops, because I'm working on it right now. Uh, so I move that to the beginning of my ready. So I've got the poppies there. Oh, I'm just going to fill in this information. Started January 13th, and I finished it yesterday. January 17th, 19. Okay. Um, so this one, I'm going to say I started at 2019, 18. Okay. So all, all of the information about the diamond painting, uh, the relevant information, I keep on this sheet. So it's uh, 30 by 40, it's square drill. I bought it on AliExpress from the Artback Sticking Embroidery Store. It cost me $13.07 Canadian. I ordered it during the 11.11 sale. I, it arrived in Canada on the 20th of November during our postal strike. That's why I don't have a shipping date. I thought the more relevant date here was the date that it arrived in Canada. And... Um, it was delivered on December 5th, which is a very long delivery time, but that's because of this, uh, the strike. So I won't need this again until it's time to update the spreadsheet and update that, uh, that card. So what I do now is, uh, you know what? That's not very clear, so I am going to have to make a, a better copy of the original one. I'm going to pause you for a moment while I make that photocopy uh, that's less dark. Because, goodness, I have to put the light on just a moment. Okay, so you can't actually read those symbols too well, some of them. So I want to make a better photocopy. Um, so just one moment while I do. Okay. So I've come back with my, yeah, I've come back with my photocopy. And, uh, hold on, I'm trying to figure out which way this will go eventually. It's going to go this way, okay. Uh, and so I made the photocopy using the lightest um, ink density so that I can actually read the symbols, okay? Because I'm going to stick those on uh, the Darice boxes using some tape. So all I do, and I'll bring you down so you can see, and also so I, oops, okay, hold on a second. Um, I want you to be able to see, but I don't want you to get, oh my goodness, sorry, that is my uh, cord for my phone, and I just have to make sure that it is 
not going to get in your way. All right. Tiny bit. I want as small a piece of paper as possible to stick on um, the boxes. There. Okay, so that's garbage now. And now I need my tape. And I, I hope that was well centered. I don't know if it was or not, but anyway. Okay, so here's what I do. And I learned my lesson because the last time I did this in the wrong order. Um, so what I'm doing first is organizing the boxes according to DMC numbers. And I just take, hold on, I'll try and get the tape dispenser into view as well. There. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I just, oops, I got goop on the bottom of my tape dispenser. It's very old. Um, I just take a little piece of tape, there, and it doesn't matter if it's not uh, as long as the whole um, symbol and stuff here because it's it's just got to be on there well enough that I can tell which DMC uh, or which symbol because I, I don't pay attention to the DMC numbers at all while I'm drilling and I never pay attention to the legend on the diamond painting after I've done this um, so uh, really all I care about is the symbol for this but I put the DMC number on there afterwards because I'll take this and take it off of the beat uh, container and put it in or put it on the rubber or not the rubber the plastic bag that I put drills in uh, when I have the leftover drills and uh, and so then that way I, I keep track of which painting I can keep that track that way of which painting uh, something came from so that if I ever do lose a drill off of a painting I can look for that symbol and that number the particular symbol and number for that painting um, and make sure I use exactly the same drills that uh, that the rest of the painting had because um, dye lots are different. I don't want the the piece of tape to be too much bigger than this little tiny strip of paper. Um, I just want it to, to overlap the top and bottom a teeny tiny bit. Oh, there's a leftover drill in here. Okay. So for that, this is from my error moment. So for that, what I'm going to do is just, I have this mix container, which I keep, these are all of the ones that um, have, you know, I've gotten from different diamond paintings. And these are all the drills that I found lying around after a painting was done and I couldn't figure out which color they were. So, um, so they're there. I don't know why, because I'm, I don't know why. Oops. So this takes a little bit of time just to label all the um, the containers, uh, but that's okay. It's it's worth it because it makes. Whoops! I put that on crooked. That's all right. Nope, that's not all right. I don't want it to overlap the top because then drills will end up sticking to it. 
So I just have to cut this tape a little tiny bit. All right, good. Uh, now I can't get the tape off of me. Okay, there we go. Anyway, um, so I'm going to do this for the rest of them. You don't have to watch me do that. I'm going to stop uh, the taping and I'm going to do the rest of them. I'll show you the Doris thing after I'm done and then I'll um, start filling up the containers. So just a moment. Okay, I'm back. And so I have now labeled all of the containers. Uh, the containers right now are in DMC order. And they're going to stay that way until I filled them all up. And once I filled them all up, I'm going to change their order and I'll show you that as well. So I'm just going to set this aside for now. And here is what I do next. And I think I'll bring you down even lower. So now I take this, I take my first set of drills. These are 3746. So I find my 3746 in the Doris bead container. Okay, I just, I, I double check because you don't want to be making a mistake about which drills you're putting in. Oh, what I have not done is uh, put, uh, get it, hold on. Um, just bear with me for a second because I need to get my pre-cut, um, my pre-cut, fabric softener sheets. There we go. Oh no, that's not them. Okay, there we go. We've got a bunch of them there. I might have to cut some more, but I won't worry about that right now. So, um, okay. I might forget to put a piece in some of them, but that's all right. So I can usually fit five uh, bags of beads in here comfortably, comfortably, and um, the the inventory sheet actually says that for this company um, there are three colors that have big bags. So one of these small bags, oops, one of these small bags has 200 drills. And the big bags, wherever they are, I'm not, fi oh, I'm not finding them. Anyway, if there were big bags, there would be uh, a thousand pieces in each one. Um, now, I did do an inventory, so I know that I have all the colors that I'm supposed to have and all the bags that I'm supposed to have, so I'm not concerned about that. Okay, so... Um, I'll get this ready just in case. And I just use my fingers to tear open the bags. Uh, usually I don't need to I don't need to use scissors. And I just shake them into the funnel. And then on to, I'm gonna lift you up a little bit because I find it difficult to work. Um, with the phone so close to my fingers. Okay, so there we go. Shake, shake, shake. And I've got the, con uh, the, um, the little red container underneath uh, just to capture any drills. I mean, they usually don't, well, they don't slide off of the uh, baking mat, but um, this is just for extra safety. Okay, so there's the first color, whoops, and there's a traffic jam, there we go. Oh, and now my tweezers have glue on them from removing the adhesive. Oh, and I did remove the adhesive from the other uh, half of the painting, um, 
and it actually went even faster. I don't know why, but removing the, the second sheet of glue, um, the excess went super, super fast. So now, let's see, this should just slide in there. Yep, it does, okay. So that's one color. And I'll just put it back where I found it for now. 37, 46 doesn't really matter uh, if I put it back exactly where I found it. Um, I'll do one more color. Okay, I'll do this one because this is 775. And 775, as you see, there are many bags of it. Uh, in fact, there are 32 bags of it. Um, I'm only going to put, I don't know, probably about five. I'm going to start with four, see if I have room. And if I have room, I'll put more in the container. So I just have to reach for the container. Normally I do this slightly, oh, you know what, I'm going to do this slightly differently now. Because I don't want to be reaching all, all, all the time. So I will put this here. Sorry, that'll, that should be the last time that you, uh, you see my hands, or my arm. Um, if all goes well from here on. Okay. So sometimes, sometimes um, I don't bother using the funnel. Let's see. And then sometimes I get in trouble because the drills are staticky. Oh yeah, I need speaking of static. I need one of these. All right, so that's two, uh, or that's um, four that I put in there. I can fit another one in, so I'm just gonna tear off one more. I don't like overfilling these because then uh, you, sometimes there's trouble with with drills that um, come out the side. Like they, they anyway, uh, I don't like filling them right up to the top. Some people do, I believe Alison Rosen does, She, which is one of the reasons why she, I think, doesn't love these anymore because she likes to fill them right up to the top. And because there's this little divot here um, on the container, it, it, it makes it difficult sometimes. So, but that's why I don't fill them all the way up. Okay, I'm gonna pause you again. Oh, and then I've got all these extra drills, right? What am I going to do with them? Well, I have my trusty shoe box that I just have a, a white uh, tea towel in and I keep a copy of the inventory sheet in there just in case I need it. And I just drop this in and that's where I keep all my extras. And then when I finish going through one of the Doris containers, uh, I just go to the shoe box and get more and refill the containers. So this is 318, I'll get my 318. And I'm gonna put you on pause so that the next thing you'll see is this uh, completely filled up. And then I'll show you how I do my next step. Okay, I've put you back on because I've come across a, oops, a color that is so staticky, these drills are dancing all over the place. So I just wanna show you what I'm doing. Um, I'm putting them into a dryer sheet. I'll roll them around in the dryer sheet. Like, they are so staticky, oh my goodness. Um, Like they're just dancing. And I see that there's some trash in here. So I think that if they're staticky at the factory when they put them in here, the little bits of them st stick together, stick to the plastic, whatever. Maybe they don't, you know, because I, I suspect that there must be some sort of process that blows, blows off um, some of the lighter pieces. 
I don't know. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm just sort of thinking, how do they make sure that they don't get all the little bits? Because I see little bits of trash in here. Um, like the drills themselves look to be really good quality. Um, you know, they, they all look perfectly square and so forth. But I do find little bits of trash, like all kinds of little bits of trash. Um, anyway, I'm not going to worry about the trash now because this is not a trash uh, cleanup. It is a filling my containers exercise. Okay. And they're sticking to me as well. Um, because that's what static e drills do. Okay, so there's my there's my five bags. There were considerably more bags of uh, this 3811 color, uh, but they're in the shoe box. So I'm just going to roll this around in. Try to make sure that all of the drills touch the um, dryer sheet at some point to oops, eliminate as much static as possible. And then I use the dryer sheet itself as a type of funnel to get the drills into the container. And whoops, okay, that was the dryer sheet touching the drills and pushing them out of the container. Oh, and look, there's a little piece of trash right here, which I'll put. Oh, I'm gonna have to start a temporary trash because this is this is the trash from my poppies. Whoops. Um, and I don't want to mix my trashes. Uh, and I'll I'll be showing the trash more um, in more detail on uh, the video that I'm going to shoot tomorrow. Okay, so I'll just pour these in here. There we go. And I put a dryer sheet in there at the very beginning. Make sure that the drills are all in there. Okay, so that's it. So that's another color done. That's how I deal with the staticky drills. Um, so I'm going to pause you again, and unless something crazy happens, the next thing you'll see is um, the completed field. Okay, everybody, I'm back. So I have uh, finished uh, organizing my drills. And these, these, oh my gosh, the colors. Uh, I love organizing drills because you get to look at the colors again. And I mean, these are the ones that there are a lot of, so a lot of the background and so forth. But, oh my goodness, these are, these are just some of the gorgeous colors. So these are the ones that, um, that are extra. And I'll just put this on the table here. Oops. While I put away my shoebox. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you the drills. Look at this. I hope I hope you can see the colors. I'm not sure if you can or not, but I hope you can because these are they're stunning. They are just so incredibly gorgeous. Like. Uh, can you see that? Where are the? Okay, I have so much trouble just figuring out where the where the camera is. Okay, there we go. Um, I mean, look look at this purple. Look at that. That's just that's just a thing of beauty. And the blues and more blues and uh, you know, there's not a lot of most of the colors. Um, it is, after all, a fairly small diamond painting, but. Um, but the colors that there are are gorgeous. Okay, so these are now still in DMC order. And what I'm going to do now is make a little bit of space. Whoops. 
because now I'm going to put them in an order that makes sense for me. And I've got the um, I've got the legend, the actual legend, the diamond painting right beside me in case I have trouble. So what I always start with is the alphabet and I put things in alphabetical order. So there's B, S comes after B, uh, H comes before S, E comes before H. I call that a T. It's a little T. Oh, hold on. Sorry, I, I don't have you in view again. I apologize for that. So that's it's a little T, but it's a T. Uh, and then that's an M. I have the A. That, even though it might be something else, is very clearly an X to me. But there's another X as well, so I'm sticking all of the X's together. Um, let's see what else I've got. I've got a, a U. So I'll stick that there. What else do I have here? In terms of letters, I have a G. So it's a little bit of um, you know moving things around so that I've got things in an order that's going to make sense to me. I've got a W, WX. Um, okay, so that's all the letters. Then what I do is I put all the numbers together. Uh, so there's a seven. So I've got, so here I've got, oh, I'm going to lift you up because you can't see the whole bead tray and that's a bit of a, of a problem. All right, I think that's better. Okay, I apologize for not having set this up properly uh, earlier. Okay, so I've got A, B, E, G, H, M, S, T, U, V, W, uh, T, U, W, X, X, 7. So after I do the letters and the numbers, and there are no more numbers, so what I do now is I get the symbols, things that are super simple that I will be able to just have the name in my head. So I've got a check mark, I've got an asterisk, I've got a heart, I've got a spade, I've got a diamond, I've got a moon, I've got a down arrow, I've got a, um, what do you call those things? Like a kitchen timer, you know, those glass things, the sands of time, and you flip it over. I can't remember what the name is, but I know what it is. Uh, I got an ampersand, okay, so that actually is a keyboard symbol, so that goes before non-keyboard symbols. Um, what else do I have? Okay, so I'm going to call that, I'm going to call that, um, okay, I'm going to call that a nipple. Um... And that is a less understood symbol, so that'll go down here. Um, I've got a black box. I've got a cross. And I'll show you all of these. I have to give them names. So many of you know I have to give them names. So I'm looking at this, 3346, and the reason... What? Oh, 3346. Okay, so the reason that I'm doing this is that I have this here. It's because I need to sometimes make sure that I can tell what the copy is. So this is, I don't know, I'm going to call it an upright cigar. Because why not? And then I've got a teardrop. And I've got, um, eh, let's 
let's see, I'm going to call that Saturn. Can you see it? Saturn. And I'm going to call that, um, actually, I'm going to move that over to keyboard symbols because I'm going to call that a, um, you know, the uh, oblique, the, the thing that you put in a website address. I'll put that right after the check mark. Okay. Um, and then the last one that I've got here, it's, well, on, you can see it better on here. I have seen this symbol before and it is like two little dots or two little diamonds or something. Oops, you're not seeing it because I don't have it. Um, anyway, it's 581. Uh, it's like two little dots. So um, I'm putting that there. Okay, so now my drills are in an order that I will become familiar with and I never will have to look at the legend again, ever. Uh, unless I lose a drill sometime down the road and I have to figure out which color the particular drill is. But I am done with, um, okay, this is, tomorrow in, in my video I'm going to take the trash and I'm going to put it into my big trash container. So this is the trash from the last painting that I finished. And um, when I do the post completion tomorrow, after I do it, then I'll be able to put this away. Uh, but so for now, because I will be drilling tonight, um, for now what I'm gonna do is just put this here, it's blank, but I'm gonna know it's trash because it's in my, this is where the trash goes. It always goes in the second column. And then the mix always goes over here. So I also know that I've got 13, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30 colors. Um, and now I am ready to start diamond painting. Uh, so what I do, I'm going to set up my table and I'll show you what my table looks like afterward, after I'm done. Uh, okay, everybody, I'm back. I'm just going to pull back as much as I can. So that you can see as much as possible okay so and I'll show you the whole workspace in a in a moment but um, so now I'm ready to set up my diamond painting so I have um, I have my other baking mat with the well is it silicone so it um, so it uh, prevents anything from slipping since I'm on the uh, since I'm on the um, what you will call it uh, tilted drafting table. I can plug in my light pad, which okay, you can see that. Um, like I'll adjust this for you know the right positioning for me later, but for now, just so that you can see. Um, Here's what I do. Oh, and I wanted to tell you, after that one staticky set of drills, there was only one other staticky set of drills, and there were only, I think, one or two bags of it, so there wasn't a problem. And those two sets of drills, the two that were the two colors that were staticky, were also the only ones that I noticed any trash in. So I'm not saying I won't come across any trash in the others. But I did not notice while I was pouring all the rest of the drills, I did not notice any trash whatsoever. Okay, so I'll just put that there. Uh, and actually, I set up my. I don't want my drills to fall off the table because I do have cats. So I try to make sure that as much as possible there's nothing hanging over the edge. Okay, so while uh, I was setting up, I uh, removed the excess glue from the other side here. So now both the top, like both sides of the top are completely ready. There's no excess glue. Uh, as you can see, there's like a teeny tiny bit there. I might remove it, maybe. Uh, and here, like there's less, there's about a millimeter. So I'm not gonna bother removing that. Uh, so I'm ready to start diamond painting. So what I do is, because I'm 
I'm fussy about this. I measure three inches from the top of the diamond painting. Okay, and I pull the paper back. And actually this is already <laughs> folded because I had shot this already. And um, okay, we're gonna try this again because uh, the fire alarm went off. I think I cut out that sound because um, like I turned off the video, but uh, anyway, uh, I must say fire responders were here in less than a minute. In fact, um, I heard the alarm go off. I turned off the video camera and then like I, I'm directly facing my front window and I saw a fire truck coming towards us with its lights and siren going. Well, I didn't hear the siren because I heard, because the alarm was off. Um, there were two fire trucks here in under a minute. Um, so that gives me a lot of confidence. Um, we don't have fire alarms very often, but uh, response for, there must be a fire house very close by. Anyway. Um, that's our first responders at work. Uh, thank goodness for them. All right, so I have pulled this back uh, three inches uh, and this is what I'm going to try and work on tonight. Uh, if I have a chance, I'll do the other side as well. But I think that given the timing, uh, it might, I'm not sure I'll get this done. Um, I was thinking of doing a drill and chat and maybe I will. Um, I'll have to get some more questions because I think I ran through almost all of the questions. Um, but, uh, but yeah, okay. So I've got my light pad set up. I've got my non-stick thing so that this is not going anywhere. The next thing I do, I lay this over top because, and I'm going to tilt this a little bit so that you can see more of my workspace. I will show you my entire workspace in a bit, um, but I put my trash thing here. Oh, this is not straight. It's gonna make me crazy. There we go. It's still not straight. Okay. Yeah, that's straight enough. Um, let's just fix this. It's actually not straight because that's straight. Yeah, okay, that's yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Um, I'm a little um, maybe over concerned about it being perfect. All right, so I got that. I got my drill pin. Uh, I have my tweezers just in case I need them. Uh, I don't think I need anything else. I don't think I need anything else. I'll get my cup of tea in my favorite mug. And I'm ready to drill. So I'm going to take you out of the holder and just show you what my workspace looks like. Bear with me. I hope I don't lose you here. All right. So there are my drills. And there's my workspace. So I got my coffee, I got my glasses because I got CNN going in the background. Um, I don't need the ruler anymore. Well, I might, nah, I don't need the ruler anymore. What I do do is to keep the, um, the sides even, well, that's why sometimes I don't remove the sticky until I've done uh, the side. Um, I put like a credit card there so that it's uh, so that it helps me stay straight. Um, well, that's not a credit card, it's, but anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty much ready to go now. Uh, I know what I'm missing. I'm missing my drill tray. Uh, so. Now, I, um, I wash my drill trays on a regular basis just because, uh, you know, they might get, 
they might get something on it that's going to stop the drills from moving. Like they, there might be a little bit of residue from the pickup pen on this because I see something here. So I will uh, wash it with dish soap and dry it carefully. And then I'm going to start drilling. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this. And um, I will be back at you in probably a day or two with um, some more videos. Well, tomorrow I want to shoot the uh, Crystal Poppies uh, completion, post-completion video. And, um, and then a day or two after that, there's another one that I shot a few days ago that's going to go up. Uh, but I might do more in the meantime. We'll see, because I did get another parcel, so there is an unboxing that I can do. Um, yeah. Anyway, so we will be talking to you again soon. Look at those drills. Aren't they beautiful? I'm so looking forward to doing this. And I, I orient them this way because I have short little arms because I'm a short little person. Um, and so I can actually reach here more than if I turn the thing the other way. Okay, so that's it. That's all I got. So I want to thank all my subscribers, new and older, um, for your loyalty, for the time that you take. I want to thank all my viewers um, for coming and joining me on my channel. And um, for those of you who leave me comments, they mean so much to me. Thank you so much. Um, if you have ideas or if you have comments that you want to share, go ahead and leave them below. If you have um, a desire for more videos like this, why don't you either subscribe to my channel or like this video. And, um, and I will be coming back to talk to you again. Uh, very shortly. So you have a great day or evening or whatever it is, whatever time you're watching this. I hope you're having a fantastic time. Okay? Bye-bye.